is a process of joining metals. On the job, naturally, the joints to be welded will be found in a number of different positions. Flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead, each position with its own problems. In this film, we shall deal with shielded metal arc welding in the flat position. Wells in this position are considered flat. The limits of the flat position are 15 degrees in this direction, 15 degrees in this direction, and 30 degrees in either of these directions. The flat groove is comparable to the flat fillet, except that there may be an opening at the root of the groove, and the angles of its sidewalls are likely to be less than those of the fillet. In flat welding, as in other positions, we are concerned with four main factors. First, current setting. Second, angle of electrode. Third, length of arc. And fourth, speed of travel. Both size of electrode and thickness of the plates to be welded must be considered in making the proper current setting. Here we are using a 3 16th Diameter all position electrode, AWS class E6010, with direct current reverse polarity. So with normal arc voltage, we shall have a current setting in about this range. It is important in starting the well that its size and shape be established immediately. Making a uniform well depends on control of the molten pool. The shape of the pool and the action of the molten metal at the rear of the pool are the operator's guides in making a weld of the proper size and shape. As the heat of the arc melts the base metal, there is an area at each side of the molten pool that is undercut. However, as the metal melted from the electrode is mixed with the molten base metal, it flows toward the rear of the pool to fill the undercut area and form the weld. The coating on the electrode forms a gas shield that protects the molten metal from harmful elements in the atmosphere. It also furnishes fluxing and slagging ingredients which combine with the impurities in the molten pool. These float to the top and in cooling form a slag over the well. On completion of the well, the slag is removed. In doing this, the operator should protect his eyes from the sharp, hot, flying particles of slag by wearing some form of goggle. The surface appearance of the cleaned weld indicates when it has been properly made. The ripples on the weld are uniform. The face is fairly flat. Fusion is complete with minimum overlap or undercut. In making long wells where more than one electrode must be used, it is necessary to thoroughly remove the slag from the crater before the weld is continued. To continue the work, the arc is struck ahead of the crater and holding a medium long arc is swung back to the rear edge of the crater to reestablish the molten pool. The weld is then continued in the normal manner. The weld has a smooth, continuous face. In order to prevent the possible starting of cracks in the arc crater at the end of a weld, it is necessary to fill the crater completely. An effective way of doing this is to pause momentarily while the crater is filled. Then, bring the electrode back over the work as it is drawn away to break the arc. With the crater properly filled, the danger of crater cracks is eliminated. The weld is started with the electrode held at about this angle. During the first few inches of travel, it is changed to about this angle, which is maintained until we approach the end of the joint. During the last few inches of travel, the electrode is brought to about this angle. These changes of electrode angle are made to counteract arc blow. And even Joe McGee has trouble with old man arc blow. (laughs) 
Arc blow is particularly troublesome in direct current welding. Notice how the angle of the electrode is used here to overcome the effects of arc blow. As the weld progresses away from the start of the joint, arc blow decreases. As it decreases, the electrode is brought up to a more normal angle. Notice the absence of trouble from arc blow when the weld has progressed this far. As we approach the end of the joint, it is again necessary to change the angle of the electrode to counteract arc blow, which now becomes troublesome from the opposite direction. It is always necessary to maintain the proper length of arc. If the arc is too long, the metal melts off the electrode in large globules and spatters over the work. The molten pool is hard to control. The surface of the weld is rough, irregular, and badly undercut. There is very little useful weld metal. When the arc is too short, it is difficult to maintain a continuous pull. Slag and gases are likely to be trapped. The weld is very irregular, with poor fusion at the root. Note the slag and gas inclusions. If the current setting is too high, there is too much heat causing the metal to melt too fast for good control. There is excessive spatter. The slag is hard to remove. Penetration is too deep with undercut on both sides. When the current setting is too low, there is not enough heat to maintain a continuous pool. The weld is rough and irregular. Fusion is poor, especially at the root, with excessive slag inclusions. It is necessary that we maintain a correct and uniform speed of travel. If travel is too fast, the metal is not melted properly for good control of the pool. The weld is small and rough. The edges are undercut and fusion is poor. When speed of travel is too slow, the heat is held in one place too long, melting too much base metal for proper control of the molten pool. The weld is oversized. Fusion is poor at the root. Metal is wasted. To make a groove weld in the flat position, the same procedure as used for the fillet weld is employed. The width of the root opening may make it necessary to weave the electrode from side to side in order to ensure proper fusion at the edges. The correct weld has a uniform flat face. Fusion is good. The second layer is made with a similar weaving motion. And the face of this layer, if correct, is also flat and uniform. The second layer of the flat fillet weld is made in the same way as the second layer of the flat groove weld. Fusion is complete in both types of joint. Now again, let's remember that in order to make successful welds in the flat position, we must control the metal in the molten pool. This can be done only when we have correct current setting. Correct angle of electrode 